Good Friday morning, ladies and gentlemen, Alliday Mobile Media, giving you a little project update. As you can see, it's kind of time to get out here and do a little maintenance on the lawn. Some of the bulbs that we've planted are coming up. Uh, this little guy here, um, you can see the right over there, our, uh, uh, our daylilies are starting to kick in finally that, that we've transplanted. Boy, oh boy, oh boy, look at all the chilies on here. Am I going to have me a good omelet or what? But you can see we have some sage coming in over here. A lot of the flowers. Now, we did plant artichokes and sunflowers over here. And I see a few sunflowers coming in. I don't see uh, uh, the artichokes coming up yet. Uh, perhaps over in there somewhere, they're probably kind of hidden. You know, I, I'm thinking, when I look here, this is a lavender plant. The lavender, a lot of the woody stemmed herbs, which are on the drought tolerant side, ladies and gentlemen, they're not doing well. There is a lot, a lot of water here. And again, I'm learning a new uh, agriculture growing co uh, 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 code. They, there's different growing sections in the country, one through nine. Uh, Missouri is one of those uh, phenomenal states. It has five six and seven growing zones in it so there, there's three different growing zones you can see if i remember correctly that is a uh, anaheim chili we got some basil coming up over here too more sage the tomatoes are filling in but uh, uh as you can see now i took some pictures i cut this up i took some pictures and we're going to put that in uh, uh in one of the groups i got a friend of mine that belongs to a group called Missouri Homestead and Gardening and there was a bunch of beetles on this. Is that one of them right there? I don't see them. There was a whole bunch of beetles on here and I took some pictures. They'll be up on the website in a little while because I need to find out what they are. That's elm so I got a feeling it might be that Japanese elm beetle. Um, real pretty guy man. Real pretty guy. You can see the tomatoes are all kicking in. Getting ready to go do a little uh, uh, landscape maintenance on other properties here this morning. Uh, uh, you know, landscape maintenance, that's, that can be part of anybody's gardening program. If you set a gardening program up for an organization, landscape maintenance is a way to generate revenue for your program. And, and get yourself biodegradable compost material. Very healthy uh, way to, to do things and uh, uh, generate a little bit of revenue. Bell peppers kicking in real nice over here. We do have... That's the girl squash. That's the girl squash. Here's the boy squash. Right there. These, these are all male flowers over here. Now the female flower, it won't open up probably till it gets about that much taller. And then it'll open up and, and the bees will be able to get in there and they'll pollinate. When they do, ladies and gentlemen, I will come out, I'll self-pollinate these because this particular plant right here is a Hubbard squash. That is my spaghetti squash. I purposely planted these together to show you how to cross-pollinate them or to show you how to self-pollinate, pardon me, so they don't get cross-pollinated. That's the words I want. There's a female right in there, if you can see it. There you go, right there. Again, the, the males always open up first. It's, I don't know, kind of a man thing, I guess you could say, huh? Uh, uh, but... They're opened up now. They're waiting for the females to open up. The bees, as you can see, we got the pollinators going on. They're, they're getting the pollen. Now, early in the morning, these flowers will close up when it gets hot. And then uh, uh, they're open early in the morning. Remember, bees, like hummingbirds, work when it's cool. Hummingbirds feed when it's cool. That's why a, a flower like this one in the front here, and you can see the tomatoes, we're starting to get tomatoes all over here. So uh, uh, this is working out really well for us. Our oregano bed is filled in pretty decent there, huh? That's it. Oh, well, look at that. We got little mushrooms going on. Hmm. Hmm. I wonder if the Mad Hatter is going to pay us a visit today. But you can see this is all. But again, you can see the, the rosemary hasn't really kicked in, and I, I'm thinking it's too much water i'm not real sure this is another lavender plant maybe something happened in the transplanting phase i'm not sure but it just hasn't kicked in a lot more water than what i'm used to when i put these plants in this area um of course i put them here to get the the rainfall off the eaves but 
let's get to this plant right here. This is a four o'clock, and as you can see, the flowers are starting to close for the day. They open up at four o'clock in the afternoon. That's why they're called four o'clocks. They open up late afternoon when it starts to cool down, and this is why they are a perfect flower in your garden, a perfect addition if you like to attract hummingbirds. Of course, the hummingbirds, they have that little long thing. They can stick their little bill in there and get the, the nectar out of the out of the flower but again four o'clocks gladiolas anything that has a trumpet type uh, uh, flower on it a horn like that where the hummingbird can stick his little doohickey in there and get what he needs out of there to feed he or she uh, and they're they're really they are really a beautiful animal they the color on them is unbelievable and I don't know if you've ever watched them mate but they fly in pairs and they'll fly I mean they do all that crazy stuff man they, they're really cool to watch very fascinating creature that has bestowed us upon this earth for Alliday Mobile Media ladies and gentlemen hey let's have a great day and let's all be safe out there huh